Awakening and realization are not spiritual bypassing. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise. You may need to do work, therapy, trauma therapy, inquiry, emotion work. You may need to do a lot of it, but that's not what realization is. It might be a part of the process of integrating. It may be an important part of the process, but realization is the seeing that there is no one that is happening to. There's no one moving from moment to moment. There's no glue that holds experience together. There's only vivid experience. So what bypassing is, is convincing yourself that because there's no one, no self, no person, I don't need to do any work. It's remaining mind identified to various degrees and then using beliefs about or spiritual terminology to convince yourself or to communicate to others that there's nothing to do, there's no work to be done because there's no one that it can be done to. And that's a mistake, that's an error. It's a misunderstanding of the relative and the absolute and the relationship between the two and the seeing that they are not two. Because when the self is truly seen through, meaning self-structure is dissolved at all levels, the reactive self, the separate self, the inherent self, then all of that work is effortless. It just goes on and on. It's fine. There's no problem. It's not better or worse to be in therapy than it is to be a spiritual teacher. It's not better or worse to be wealthy than it is to be poor. It's not better or worse to be melancholy than it is to be silly, gregarious. No distinctions are made. Reality doesn't make distinctions. Unfiltered reality doesn't pick and choose. It doesn't push or pull on anything. So the character is fine, just as it is. It needs work. So let the work be done. It's fine. It's not a problem. There's nothing to avoid. Avoidance doesn't exist. Avoidance is a movement of mind. It's a distraction of thought. In reality, none of this really touches what you are. The coming, going, becoming, waking up, struggling with awakening, beliefs about yourself, physical challenges, health challenges, relationship challenges. All of that is perfectly fine. It's untouched. But more importantly, it doesn't touch what you truly are. It doesn't touch your true nature. Your true nature has nothing to say about any of it, but it's not apart from any of it. It's so close and primary and intrinsic to everything, to every movement, every feeling, sensation, thought, belief, delusion. It's so intrinsic to all of it, even to suffering, to samsara, that it doesn't even notice. It doesn't consider anything in error. It doesn't consider anything apart. It doesn't experience apartness. So you can't do anything wrong. You can't make mistakes, really. There is only aliveness, and it doesn't make mistakes. Maybe in the relative, you could say it makes mistakes, but that's only relative to another view. In the grand scheme, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how awake or asleep you are. It doesn't matter whether you think you're a good person or a bad person, or whether you're lazy or motivated, whether you accomplish a lot or a little whether you're monastic or a householder, it just doesn't matter. Because everything, every ounce, every millimeter, every molecule is divine. Nothing could ever be apart from anything else. So the completion is already here. You can't move from here. You can't move from what you are. You can't move from reality. Reality can't step apart from itself and become aware of itself because it's all those movements at once. And when it's every movement at once, then you really know what stillness is. Instinctually, 
it's completely obvious. You can't think about it. You could try to think about it, but it's not stillness you're thinking about. Stillness just is. True peace is stillness. <laughs>